I've shown mushrooms on the videos before, but I thought I'd show this edible plant. This is called Queen Anne's Lace. I think uh, the most typical looking is maybe sort of this flat one right here. It's an easy way to identify it. It's lacy. There, there's another look-alike plant that's poisonous, but it's much bigger. It's uh, eight inches across, kind of like the flowers you see on the elderberry. So this plant, you pull it up and you eat the roots. If we wash them off really good, they look nicer, but it tastes like carrots. It has kind of a carrot root. Down here where the where I discovered the tractor overheating when I was mowing down all this brush and we have been saving some of these elderberries and here's one right here that's loaded with berries you can see all those berries and then up here there's berries all over everything I understand the birds go kind of crazy on them wow this uh this is a muscadine vine it's got some kind of crazy disease we need to cut that down so like i said i've been down here spreading seed just finished emptying this bucket i, I just had like maybe a fourth of the bucket and i spread it on and maybe i was running out so maybe just a fourth of this area behind me but then all the way down the trail and all around in the main area where I had the bonfire so I'm heading back that's all I'm doing now it was pouring down rain I had to sit on the golf cart and wait for the rain to stop <laughs> and then I spread my seed and it's supposed to rain again in the next couple of hours <laughs> so hopefully it'll kind of push these seeds down in little nooks and crannies I did do a little bit of raking to try to sort of plant some of the seeds, but a lot of it is just spread on the surface. We're supposed to have rain for the next three days, so I think it'll give it a chance to get down in the ground good and germinate well. So I just did almost every bit of this area and up around the corner up the hill a little bit down the path and down to that area where we started. So just in this area, I've got elderberry everywhere, just loaded, loaded, loaded. Hopefully we can get a really good supply of that, use some of it, freeze dry some of it. The main thing will be able to not have to order it anymore because we do order it. Yesterday we went to Old Fort, which is near Asheville, and there's a really nice, uh, it's called Painter's Greenhouse, and got a few plants. I didn't really have anything in mind that I wanted, but Cindy wanted to look and see what they had. They, for garden plants, they were kind of done for the season. So we got this, it says curry plant, but I guess this plant is also what they make helichrysum from which is a really expensive uh, essential oil. So we're gonna experiment with that. We've got a eucalyptus plant, eucalyptus tree. So this is really good to take a few pieces and hang it in your shower and just have a really nice smell in the shower. Um, it can also be used for Lots of other things. It's good for just breathing. Here we got some uh, rosemary, which we've needed a rosemary plant. We had a really good one at our last house. 
And so we hope this one will grow into a big bush for us. We'll use it for cooking. And then a pumpkin plant, you can see sort of the big leaves tangled in here. This one, I don't remember what this was. Oregano, that's right. Which we don't cook with oregano so much. But if we got a whole lot of it growing, maybe we would try to make some oregano oil, which is excellent for everything. <laughs> this is stevia. I just took a small piece of a leaf and chewed on it, and I couldn't believe how much sugar-flavored sweetness comes from just a little piece of a leaf. It's amazing. So if we grew a lot of that, we could use it for a, a sweetener. It seems like it doesn't have as much bitter flavor as when you buy processed stevia. And then this is a, I think it's called a cutting celery. So that might be a, a nice plant to throw into salads or whatever celery would go into. We're having days of rain and it helps us to notice a lot of things we might not notice if it weren't raining so much. If you look at the peak here of the picnic shelter, I can see where water is splashing up onto the siding. And we haven't put our flashing on yet, and our flashing is really tall. So it's going to cover most of that. But it's just something to be aware of that our water does splash high up there. Just all kinds of little things like that. We can watch for leaks. And I was showing on the last video where our water flow was going. A lot of things we can learn. Something else, yesterday, camera gave us a call. We were about half an hour away from here. We had done some shopping. It was when we were coming back from Asheville. And camera gave us a call and said that dogs had started chasing our sheep. So there was, you know, we were kind of, our hands were tied. We couldn't get here fast enough but we just worked on getting here as quick as we could. And uh, we called Monica and Rico and they came over. Well, Rico came over. Monica stayed with her sheep because she didn't want dogs getting her sheep. So we do have them all back in there. You can see them down here in the field, but it was a crazy fiasco. Um, so thank you to Rico, uh, Victor, our other neighbor, came and helped us. Um, we had found them. I think, you know, he was looking for a little while and then we found him while he was here. So thank you for all of our neighbors help. We really appreciate it. And we got our sheep secure again. The dogs just ran off and we don't know where they went, but we, we might have to talk to another neighbor to keep their dogs secure because we can't have them attacking our sheep. They had run down in the woods this way and they kind of ended up sort of out that way on another piece of property where no one has a house and no fencing or anything. So it was kind of easy to get them and bring them back. But they were just standing there in the woods once they weren't being chased anymore, just finding, finding things to eat. But they were a little out of sorts, they they didn't come to us very easily. So I'm gonna go up here to the top of the barn and work on a rainy day project. I got some lights turned on, some work lights. There's one over here behind me. Cause it's so dark up here, especially on a rainy day, but just getting it closed in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to start putting in some insulation here and covering these walls. I'm going to do this side because over here on the sides, I want to fill these cracks with foam insulation. So I want to do that before I put insulation in here, before I cover it with siding, obviously. Same on the other side over here. Here's an example of one row where I sprayed some of that foam insulation. And I've got foam insulation here, but my nozzle just does not seem to want to work right. I, I worked on it for at least half an hour the other day and could not get it working right. This is the part I've been dreading. Here's the, here's the sauna wall. And 
I need to uh, close up all of this all the way down. It's a lot of crawling, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not excited about it, but it needs to be done, and it'd be good to go ahead and do it while I still have access to both sides. So I'm gonna start here. So if you weren't sure exactly where I was, I was up there crawling around under the roof. It's at the end of the picnic shelter. So I got one board up there. <laughs> it was, it's terrible. It's like crawling around underneath the house. It's cleaner, sort of. So it's gonna take me a little while. So I've got two out of three boards done. I'm glad there's no wasp nests in here. I have been finding some wasp nests in the ceiling up inside the barn. I'm really glad there's none right up in here for me to crawl or crawl around and hit or put my head on it or anything like that. So one more board is gonna get this side done for at least 12 feet. Then I'll have about four feet right in here that'll need to get patched up. And then this I'm gonna leave open because that's where the hay is gonna be and that'll give it some ventilation over there. Okay, all done down there. I cut out some boards here to get this stuff done. I did these separate because it meant less trips up and down the ladder and up and down the stairs and all that. I put this hole through so that I can run my extension cord that I need to run, but also maybe in the future I might want to run uh, plumbing or water line or something like that. And I'm not really sure what in the world I might put through there, so I'm leaving the hole kind of big. Actually, Danger Cat might find that as a really nice door to come in and out. Of course, this is all open, <laughs> so she can go in and out down there until I get these barn rooms separated. So the part of this that I consider a chore is wrapped up. The seams are tighter over here. I'm, I think I am gonna do spray insulation over here, but I may not do it over here. Okay, working on the fun part. I got two boards in here around the window here and the light switch and the outlet installed and it's looking really good. Good enough that I think I want to continue down this wall first. <laughs> I, I wanted to do this wall because that's where my dartboard is going and I wanted to go ahead and have the dartboard up there on the wall. But this wall I think will just go smoothly and I've only got one more outlet down here. So it'll just be easier to continue this way for now. Plus it's gonna tie into the walls around the sauna so then it'll have a very finished look. Hey, in the comments of this video, if you could let me know, do you like watching some of these uh, time-lapse videos where I'm running all around doing stuff really fast? <laughs> or do you like it better when I show you what I got done and then show you what I got done after that? Tell me which one you like better. Takes a little while to get all that tar paper and insulation in there. But it's looking nice and crisp and looking pretty awesome. You can see that when they ran through the woods, they kind of were catching their wool. Kind of around their necks and stuff. It was kind of shredding up their wool. Let's see. Around your neck, a little, it's a little worn out. You got some stuff hanging off your neck. I guess just pushing their way through those thick trees and branches. Yeah, this one especially. Berries are starting. We went down here along the edge of the trees and picked some berries this morning. And also the blueberries. With all the rain, some of the blueberries are splitting open. A lot of them are just here's one. So you can see that one right there split open. So a lot of bees are getting in here too. But we're getting a few, oh, that one's too red. I hate it when you pick ones that are not ready yet. They're a little bit tart. 
but they're good. Mm. Sweet, just a tiny bit tart. You can see that later we're gonna have lots and lots of blueberries. Like I said, they've only just started. I decided to jump outside the front of the barn again and stand on this plank and work on some of these boards right here at the corner that haven't been done yet. So I'm standing here above the ground. I'm, uh, I was gonna do a quick video just to look at my measurements. So I wanted to have a place so that I didn't have to climb out here over and over. Cause I have to cut out around, I have to cut out my next plank. I gotta cut out around this thing. I gotta cut out around this thing. <laughs> I gotta cut out around this thing. So that's my measurements. Gonna show how that board came out. I didn't realize that I had to notch around this board and around this board, so I had even more notches than I thought, but it came out okay. I just now need to put a corner piece on all the corners of the barn. Soon I'll be building doors. Looking really nice. Got all the way to this corner and I have to stop now. <laughs> but I'll get back to it sometime.